Now that we've looked at first order differential equations, let's see what a second order differential equation looks like. A second order linear differential equation takes the form of the first equation listed in the slide, where the second derivative of y with respect to t plus p of t times dy by dt plus q of t times y is equal to g of t. Again, p of t, q of t, and g of t are all polynomial functions. For the purpose of this course, we're going to look at particular variations of this general form. Our first example is the second equation listed on the slide, where the second derivative of y with respect to t minus y is equal to zero. What this equation tells us is that the second derivative of y with respect to t is equal to the original function. So now, the nice thing about solving differential equations is that we can use a little bit of intuition to guess at what the solution should be and then use the exact same formulation or the same test that we did when we checked our answer when we solved the first order differential equation to be able to verify that it is a solution. So, looking at again at this original differential equation, we had the double derivative of y with respect to t minus the function itself, y is equal to zero. And so I can rearrange this equation and make it say, d squared y by dt is equal to y. And this is why I could say that the double derivative of the function with respect to t, that's just equal to the function itself. And so we already know of one class of functions that if you take the derivative of that function, then you're going to get the function itself back. And the one function that does that is the exponential function. So if I were to then say y of t is equal to some constant times e to the x. As a general form for our solution, then let's take the double derivative of this and let's make sure that we get the function back. So we could say dy by dt, that's going to be equal to, well, the derivative of c1e to the x, that's just going to be c1e to the x. And if I take the derivative of this again, so I get the double derivative, I'm going to get again c1e to the x. So this function does satisfy this differential equation. If I were to take this function and plug it into the differential equation, I would get back, or I would find something that is that satisfies the differential equation. So we know we have at least one solution. Now we can have a different, or another function that also fulfills this requirement. Because I could have equally said y of t is equal to c2 times e to the negative x. And so in this case, if I take the derivative of this function, I'm going to get dy by dt, that's equal to negative c2e to the negative x. Because again, when I take the derivative of this, I get the function back, and then I have to take the derivative of the inner function, the derivative of negative x is negative 1, so I get a negative sign. If I take the derivative of that, then I'm going to get my function returned to me. Because if I take the derivative of negative c2e to the negative x, well, I get back the original function again, times the derivative of the inner function, minus x, I get another minus sign which cancels out the minus sign. So now what I have is something where I now have two solutions. And so the thing with differential equations is that if I find two solutions that satisfy the differential equation, then the summation of those two solutions also satisfies the differential equation. So let's try that. Let's say I make a guess that my solution is going to be equal to c1e to the x plus c2e to the negative x. And if I take the derivative of this function, dy by dt, well I have the derivative of the first part, and I'm going to get c1e to the x, because I regain the function, the derivative of x, the inner function, is equal to 1. I'm going to subtract c2e to the negative x, because the derivative of c2e to the negative x is the same function times minus 1, hence the negative sign. If I take the derivative of this function, again, so I have the double derivative of y now, 
The derivative of the first part, c1e to the x, I regain c1e to the x. The derivative of the second part, I'm going to have plus c2e to the negative x, because again, I take the derivative of the function, I regain the function, I then take the derivative of the inner function minus x, I get a negative, another negative sign, and hence I get a plus sign. So hence, what we've just discovered is that we have a function template that we can use to then solve for this differential equation. Knowing that the experimental function can be used to solve second order differential equations with constant coefficients, we will move to a more general second order differential equation defined as a times the second derivative of y with respect to t plus b times dy by dt plus c times y is equal to zero. We will use the general solution s e to the power of rt, where s and r are arbitrary constants, and plug that function and its derivatives into the general expression. The result is the second equation um, in the figure s times a r squared plus b r plus c times e to the rt is equal to zero. Because we can divide both sides by s and e to the rt, then we're left with the polynomial expression a r squared plus b r plus c is equal to zero. Remember that r is an arbitrary constant, and we can solve for it by finding the roots of the expression. The other arbitrary constant, s, is determined from the initial conditions, and based on finding these two constants, we can then write a complete solution for the differential equation. All right, so let's put this into practice. Let's solve the following differential equation. d squared y by dt squared minus beta squared y equal to zero. And let's add some initial conditions so we can completely solve the differential equation. So y at zero is equal to zero. And y prime at zero is equal to one. So we're going to follow the same solution frame that we just saw on the previous slide, where we're going to assume that our solution is going to be of the form s e to the r t. That means that the derivative of that is going to be equal to r s e to the r t, and that the second derivative is going to be equal to r squared s e to the r t. And so if I take these three terms and plug them into the original differential equation, what we're going to end up with is r squared s e to the r t. We're going to end up with minus beta squared times s e to the r t. And that's going to be equal to zero. I can now take out an s e to the r t, so I'm going to be left with, this is because of the distributive principle, but here I'm left with r squared minus beta squared, and that's all equal to zero. And because I can divide both sides by s e to the r t, then that means that that term disappears, and I'm left with simply r squared minus beta squared is equal to zero. Now it turns out that we don't need to do any solving of a quadratic equation in this case because the solution to this ends up being pretty trivial where I can rearrange and I can say r squared is equal to beta squared and therefore r is equal to plus or minus beta because of course when I take the square root of both sides the answer of course is the plus minus of that square root which is why I get plus or minus beta here. And beta was just some arbitrary constant that would just can be defined inside the beginning of the problem. But what we've now found is that our solution, at least at this point, the solution to this problem for um, this differential equation is going to be equal to y is equal to s e to the beta t plus, and I should define this as s1, s2 e to the negative beta t. And I want you to recall when we did our solution from the previous problem, we saw that we had two ways that we could take the double derivative and end up with the same thing. And in this case, you can imagine that this is also possible here, where if I take the double derivative, 
then I end up with the function itself again times beta squared. And if I look at the, the second case, the second term, this s2 e to the negative beta t, if I take the double derivative of this, well, I bring down the minus sign twice, so it cancels out and becomes positive again, and I end up again with beta squared times s2 e to the negative beta t, the original function. So both these two parts fit with the original differential equation. The only thing we need to do now is to solve for s1 and s2, and for that, we're going to use these two initial conditions, y at 0 is equal to 0, and y prime at 0 is equal to 1. So let's apply the first um, initial condition, y at 0 is equal to 0. So that means that I have 0 is equal to s1 e beta times 0 plus s2 e negative beta times 0. And I know e to the 0, that gives me 1. e to the 0 also gives me 1. And if I rearrange, then I can write minus s2 is equal to s1. Now for the second one, I have to take the derivative of the original function. So that means I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t. So I have to say dy by dt. Well, the derivative of the first function, that's just going to be beta s1 e to the beta t. And the second term, I'm going to get minus beta s2 e to the negative beta t. And what we can see here is we've got y prime at 0 is equal to 1. So that means that I'm going to write 1 is equal to beta s1 e to the beta 0 minus beta s2 e to the minus beta 0. And again, e to the 0 is equal to 1 e to the negative beta 0, that's also equal to 1. And so then I can then simplify and say 1 over beta is equal to s1 minus s2. And all I've done is just divided both sides by beta. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these two solutions, because what I have is two equations and two unknowns. So here is one of my equations, here is my second equation. And I'm going to take this negative s2. Well, I know that's equal to s1. And what I have here is a negative s2. So I'm just going to then plug in s1 into there. So that means then I'm going to get 1 over beta. That's equal to s1 plus s1. Because again, I have a term here that's negative s2. And here I have a negative s2. And so then I can just directly substitute that negative s2 for a plus s1. At 1 over beta, that's equal to 2 s1. And what that means is that then s1 is equal to 1 over 2 times beta. And then since we have the original relationship back up here, where we have negative s2 is equal to s1, if I know what s1 is equal to, then we can say that s2 is equal to the negative of s1. So it's minus 1 over 2 times beta. That means that the total solution for this problem is going to be equal to y of t is equal to s1, 1 over 2 times beta, e to the beta t, minus 1 over 2 beta e to the negative beta t. And so because we were able to have both an initial condition, and then we were able to solve for both s1 and s2. And using the standard solution that we had calculated before, the se to the rt, we were able to solve for the actual parts of the differential equation where we can come to a complete solution for this differential equation. To summarize, the order of the differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that appears in the equation. In this course, we'll be solving a lot of second order differential equations. And the solutions to these differential equations will typically have the form y is equal to se to the rt.
Be sure to do your preparation assignment, and we'll see you in class.